In the recent past, there has been an increased number of uh, bad behavior among the youths, especially the boy child. And the question is, is the boy child neglected or there is something that has gone wrong somewhere? And how are we going to make, or how can we, go, how can we make this situation better for the boy child? Um, today, we are privileged to have an exceptional personality, Mr. Elliot Berry, AKA Reverend Dad. And he's going to take us through the process of mentorship of boy child. And also he's going to speak in details about the NOAA initiative. Welcome. So, um, yeah, so the, the names that my mother and father gave me is Elliot Berry. I have four names, not just the two. There's Kunazingini Katikati. Um, and then, um, then I was given the name the Reverend Dad. Um, that's simply because, um, you know, I, I think people often think when they say the Reverend Dad, they think I'm maybe a, a Catholic priest because of the father, whatever thing. Um, but it's basically just because before I was a reverend, people used to call me dad because Niko na watoto wengi. I have 75 kids, I think, last time I counted. Um, so that I, like, you know, it was, it was easier for people just to call me dad because Niko na watoto wengi. Um, and then I was ordained um, October 22 years ago, whatever that was. The year 2020 doesn't count to me, the late 2020. So whichever two years ago it was. Um, so and then I was ordained as a reverend. So somebody just got after the ordination at like the same day. They was like, "Hey, now you're reverend dad." And I'm like, "Hey, what do you do? It a stick." Um, and then yeah, like since then, um, it's the reverend dad. Um, so I'm not Kenyan. You come, you may, you may realize. Like in Muslim Kenya. Um, and then yeah, so I'm not Kenyan. Um, although I'm trying to be Kenyan. One day I'll be Kenyan. I'm going to ID. Um, so yeah, um, so I grew up in the UK, um, in a small place um, in the Lake District. I always, I, people always say, uh, like, um, <laughs> this is you. people always say, like, I, I always say, like, I'm a Lua because I grew up in the Lake District. Like, where I'm from is the Lake District, like, districts, yeah, lakes too. Um, so I always joke that I'm, that I'm a Lua, but I'm not yet. Um, so yeah, so I grew up in the UK and then I came over to Kenya in 2009. The first time I came was 2009. Um, I, people always say like, what made you want to come to Kenya? Why did you decide to come to Kenya? And I'm like, Yo, ukweli amambo, they tricked me. I was tricked. Sijawai kubali kukuja Kenya the first time. Sijawai. Like the first time nilejoni nakuja Kenya, it, it was like, it was two weeks, I'm a three weeks before I'm coming. Now my mom is like Nilibuk Ndegi, who nailed down my But um, so basically I came to work in a children's home. Um, and I was just coming to volunteer for like three months. Again, Siku Sidi agree, I was told Unaenda. Um, and then yeah, so I so I came um, just for the three months. I was supposed to come for three months. That was it. It was never the plan. Um, and then, and I wasn't saved either. The reason that they sent me here was because <laughs> um, like I love my mom so much. Like, like I've, I've, I'm always a mama's boy and I'll always be a mama's boy. So, swap. The way car Kenya, we resort, we figure out. Um, so yeah, so I did that, and I honestly thought, you know, I would come. Uh, yeah, I would stay for three months. It would be nice. I'd feel good about myself. You know, all those really annoying, stereotypical, irritating things that a lot of Westerners have um, when they think that they're coming to places like Kenya. 
Um, and then, yeah, it was like two weeks in. Um, so uh, two weeks in and, you know, I come from a Christian family, so I, I'd always kept on going to church because it's easier to go with your parents because then they can't ask you why you're not coming. But if you don't go, then you have to have the conversation of why you're not going, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I'd just go, I'd sit when you're supposed to sit, I'd stand when you're supposed to stand, I'd leave when you're supposed to leave. Um, but just faking it really. Like I, I wasn't interested um, whatsoever. And then I came here and within the first two weeks, um, God got me and I was really annoyed about that. I was like, really? Really? The first two weeks? You couldn't even wait until like the end. Um, so the first two weeks, like I, whereas in the UK, I saw the difference, but I didn't want that. Whereas here I saw the difference and I wanted it. It was something that I really, I, I wanted, I wanted to be part of. Um, and I think it was part of the, the, the singing and the worship and things like that. Um, it's where I met my now wife, um, although that, this is like three years before we even started dating and she was singing. And I think that's really what kind of hooked me. Um, and kind of gave me that light bulb moment. Um, so yeah, so I got, I, I knew that I wanted it, but I didn't tell a single person. Um, so I kept my lips completely shut because I was convinced that, okay, I want to be saved and whatever now, but in a week or so, the phase will be over. I'll want to go back to my old life and then I'll have to have another like two and a half months with these people that think I want to be saved and I don't. So I kept my mouth completely shut and um, there was one night and I went to bed and I couldn't stop singing like these um, Swahili choruses over and over and over again you know like the like Webani Jehovah um, Hakuna Come Away with those ones and I didn't even know Swahili at that point um, like in like I just like like Nita Madomo and it got to like 2 um, a.m. in the morning and I literally like couldn't shut my mouth and I couldn't stop singing. And I, it was like God was telling me, if you don't tell people that you want to be saved, I'm going to keep on, keep you singing until they ask you, what is wrong with you? Like, why won't you stop singing? So at that point, I took a sleeping pill, <laughs> which I saw as some kind of blasphemy, but I was like, I got the point, God, I'm going to sleep. So I took a sleeping pill, um, went to bed. And yeah, then uh, the next day I, I opened up to some people and, and that's kind of how, yeah, I got saved, yeah. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk about my organization, the No Initiative, um, in a little while. But I always, it's, God has such an ironic sense of humor. So right now, the No Initiative is an organization that takes teenage boys to school. But I was a teenage boy that hated school with my absolute every being. Like, I hated it. Um, you know, when I was in primary, I would refuse to go to school. Um, like, they moved, I think I went to like six, four different primary schools because I just hated it. I just wouldn't go. My mum literally had to bribe me. Like, if I'd go to school for three days in a row, she'd buy me something. And if I went for five days in a row, she'd buy me something else. Like, that was how serious it was. There was a time that... Um, it was a new school the second day. Um, I refused to get out of the car. She went in. And now you know the difference between Kenyan and English schools. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, this is an English school. This wouldn't happen here. Um, but yeah, so I, she went in to get the teacher to come and get me out of the car. And I hid. I hid in the boot. Um, so it was like a saloon car. So my mom comes back to the car and there's no kid. You know, and I'm like seven. Like her kid has disappeared from the car. I hid in the boot. Um, see, I, I, I really didn't like school. Um, I'm grateful for it now, but at the time I just really didn't didn't like it. I didn't. I think I think in a very different way to kind of the the normal school system, which is, I think a lot of a lot of people struggle with. And then we kind of try and force kids into the normal way of thinking, and that kind of limits their genius and entrepreneurship and stuff like that. Um, but yes, I went to school in the UK. Um, hated it. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. Um, so ours, it's you know, it's GCSE, which you do at around 15. And then there's um, there's A level or international baccalaureate. So I did the international baccalaureate um, for so that would be our equivalent of form three and form four. And then I was done. Like I didn't I I, I auditioned for some drama schools, um, didn't get in. But I'm, I'm a good I'm a, yeah I'm, I'm a good actor. They just didn't they just didn't see the potential. 
um, alafu, yeah, and so I, I was done. I didn't really want to do anything. Um, I was looking into modeling. I'd had some, some gigs for that. Um, but yeah, I was, again, I was just going to come here for three months, go home and do something. And then that just didn't happen because I never really went home. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and then after, so the first three months I came, um, what we were just talking about before, um, so the first three months came and realized that, um, you know, in that kind of, um, kind of turnaround pivotal moment in my life where I accepted Christ, um, it kind of came as a whole package. It wasn't just God. It was, you know, at the same time I realized I wanted God. I realized I wanted my home to be Kenya. Um, and I realized that I wanted to work with, um, teenage boys and the boy child and things like that um, but what really irritates me I don't know again I saw you saw that I was going to see I was in you like in you know I'm going to go to now how do you really want to find you want to go to I love what want to buy the cost babu in Mozungu so of course I'm not really enough on you like any that's like in your tarry because um just because like who can I rangi si lazima ujui kile kitu unaongea so nilisema watu niende nyumbani ni qualify na a skill so that nikikuja ninakuja kufanya kitu si kama ninakuja tu kwa sababu ninaweza kuja um hii ni kitu that tuko na tabia hapa like wazungu wanakuja tu wamlizo shule pengine hata hawajamaliza hata form 4 alafu tunasema oh tunakubali vile unasema na wajui vile wanaongea um na hawajui wajui unajua vile unasema utajua ujui hawa hawajui hawajui wanafikiri hao wanajua kila kitu um so yeah so i went home uh, and nearly qualify as a counselor um so that's my kind of my schooling and that was the first kind of thing that i did and i was really good at um hata wala jaribu nilimaliza i think so jua was like ni kwa mtu ya kwanza kufika certain score wale offer like shule enye nileenda wale taka kupea mimi kazi kabla nimeleza shule ni lazima baki na pesa yangu ni baki na pesa yangu mimi nina left um so yes so then i came yeah and I, yeah So yes, yeah, so the um the Narnia initiative was kind of birthed from um a frustration. Um like yeah, so like I said I was working with the children's home at Akamanili Nilirudi for like two and a half years, but in Ilifanya um kwa that children's home. Um I was working with the older boys like our like 13 paka, like 18 uko. Um like in that organization work on a feeding program pia. Ilikuwa uko Kamkunji Kambiteso. Um I love like what really irritated me is like sour to kind organizations nyingi at a worldwide sio kenya peke like worldwide to kind organizations wanachunga watoto wanachunga mama wanachunga waze you know wanachunga wanyama you know kila kitu lakini like boys na men wako wapi lakini na okay i'm a man so kama una watu usikuje kuniwe but um the organizations that wanna chunga wa mama why why are they looking after the the women the organizations that are looking after the kids why are they looking after the kids alafu nilifanya some research and i came to realize ukianglia watoto kwa children's home for example ukifuat history back down back down back down it it came down to a man at some point either a man left and this is 90% i know there's always the 10% but like 90% a man left or a man made a promise that he didn't keep or a man lied or a man abandoned even if the woman has done it as well if you look at the statistics usually the woman abandoned the kid because the man abandoned the woman usikuje kuniwe um then you look at kids you look at women you know it's like why are we teaching women how to defend themselves why are we not teaching men how not to beat women And again this is a worldwide issue this isn't a Kenyan issue. Um you know why are we looking after kids instead of teaching parents how to look after kids. You know there's there's a very um dangerous thing when there's a you can either be a coach 
Um, so yes, yeah, so you have to ask yourselves, like, who is teaching the men? Who is teaching the boys? Because again, if you look at the statistics, like the statistics is that yeah. Um, the statistics, um, if you look at boys and girls that grew up without a dad, those kids are on the top of every negative spectrum you can imagine. Like for crime, for poverty, for obesity, for schooling, everything. Kids that grow up without fathers, they're always at the top of that list. And unfortunately, if we don't correct that system of fatherlessness, of boys and girls growing, out with, growing up without a male role model. We're just gonna keep on repeating the same cycle over and over and over again. If you look at Ata Watoto when you when we grow up in children's homes, Ukiona Badai, it's not always that great because the, that thing of the fatherlessness, the father's heart, um, it's still there. You know, like for me, for example, Ati, for me, for example, Kizungu. Kizungu. Kizungu imekuja na ndege. Hata kama mimi nimekuja nayo kwa ndege, imekuja na ndege. Um so yeah, even me. Um nilikuwa ninazama nini? Uliza swali tano. Yes. So, you know like for me, like I grew up uh, with a great dad. You know, I didn't think he was great when I was a teenager cuz it's rare for a teenage boy to think that dad is great. Um but you know, he was there, he loved my mom, um, he provided for us, um, but still I had issues with fatherhood and things like that. And now if you compare that to like, you know, not everybody is perfect. Um, or maybe he wasn't there. And that kind of thing, it sticks with us. Um, you know, and I would, anybody that's listening, I would really, I would really ask them to kind of think about their dad and, and, and forgive their dad because you know no dad's perfect and, and we you know in our organization we teach about um, we teach boys how to be good dads and and it's it's four p's so there's um, let's see if I can remember so there's protect there's provide there's prophesy and preach and there's produce um, but the fifth one is um, all good fathers make mistakes you know there's nobody perfect um, you know, I teach on fatherhood, I've got 75 kids, and I fail as a father every single day. You know, no dad is, no dad is perfect. Um, so that's, that's kind of how the boy child is involved with the NOAA initiative. And then the main way that we work is, um, so we mentor, so we provide, um, I've got a team of mentors that we work with at our office. So we mentor boys, we give them um, a male role model that they can look up to, ask advice from, everything that you would ask your father if he was there, you know from homework to dating to you know all of those kind of stuff um, and then we disciple um, as well we, we you know as an organization we don't force anybody to be a Christian but we do teach Christian values um, so we disciple we mentor and we educate um, so you know we we make sure that the kids um, are in school that they're learning something even if it's not high school so that they have a skill um, and then something that I'm probably the most passionate about is talents. Um, you know, for a good few years, then our initiative, we focused so much on, on um, schooling. And then it got to a point where I was like, oh, you know, all this stuff that we're looking at academics, I wouldn't even qualify for my own organization because I hated school. I didn't want to go to school, but yet I had something inside of me that um, just needed to be brought out. Um, so we deal, yeah, so we have football, we have running, we have art, um, we have singing and dance, um, so we've got um, a number of um, musicians that we've grown that um, are now kind of making it soon on a national level, depending on when this interview gets out, you might know who they are. <laughs> They'll either be just before something big or just after something big, um, so watch out for them. Um, so yeah, so we just, we just believe in um, young men and boys that nobody's ever believed in, or that they've not understood that they'd be believed in before and when when young boys and men are told you're worth it you can do it you don't have to be what you think you have to be the results are just amazing um, and we work you know the no initiative like I say I need a bomb like any bomb too 
Um, no Initiative C, it's not a Western organization. Like, I'm the only Westerner. Um, um, the only reason that No Initiative is doing this in Kenya is because I was called to Kenya. But the No Initiative is needed in every country of this art. Whenever I'm in the UK, like, at a, I was meeting with a judge and uh, he was asking me what I was doing in, like, you know, what I was doing in Kenya in the UK. And he's like, why are you doing that in Kenya? Like, like, 90% of the criminals that I prosecute every single day need that program. Um, so the Narnish is a Kenyan organization. Like, um, like how many of them at the beginning, like, okay, I'm in Kenya, so is it, unless, so is it or anything. Um, like, it is so important for me and for organization is to do this the Kenyan way. Um, to, to look out for young Kenyan guys, like, the, the guys that I work, work with, um, okay, technically they work for me, but I work with them. Um, you know, they're all great. They're probably better at what we do than I am. You know, that's what I look for. Um, whenever we're interviewing, I, I always say you have to be better at what we do than I am. Um, and that's there. You know, this is a Kenyan, it's a Kenyan organization for Kenyan people to promote Kenya. Um, you know, we don't, you know, people are always like, oh, you should bring some of the No Initiative to the UK to do school. And I'm like, well, yeah, maybe that will happen. Like, you I only want Kenya. You know, like, I want them to, they're, they're Kenyan men, they're Kenyans, and this is their home. And this is where their calling is. But that's not our, our aim. Um, the No Initiative is, is for Kenya. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, we're, we're six years old now as an organization and it's so hard when you're a new organization because you're telling people Tutafanya hivi, tutafanya hivi, itakua, itakua hivi. Lakini, unasema tu. But now, um, it's at the point where unasema tumefanya. So, like, you can see that it's working. Um, you know, like, we're not perfect as an organization of course but there's there's such things that i'm so proud of and and um, i'm i'm often proud of the small things <laughs> um so yeah like for me it's like if you look at um one of our boy bands um called sovereign sovereign kenya sovereign ke um you know if if you look at their stories all of them have such humble backgrounds um, you know, struggling, even if you, you know, struggling with self-esteem, struggling with all of those things. And yet now you see them on a stage and it's like, huh? Ah. struggle na confidence, and, uh, you know, but, and yet they're, they're in like, they're in front of a crowd of like, we, like we have an annual event called Praise Party. Um, and the lineup was, um, it went Mama Kings, who's my wife, and then Evelyn Wanjiru, and then Sovereign, then Moji, Moji Shot Baba, and then Ekudida. And um, the crowd reacted just as hyped and just amazing to Sovereign. You know, Kwenda before Moji Shot Baba and Saiki Agiote, in Ngumu, like Walifanya. And it's like that's what is so important, you know. It's not like, oh, the milestones of, oh, we've, you know, we've helped 75 children. Ugh. It's like there is one life that has changed that can now achieve their dreams just because somebody somewhere believed in them um, and that's kind of my biggest um, achievement and it's not my, mine by myself at all um, but just seeing um, dreams be achieved not my dreams their dreams you know it's like you want to be a singer let's do it you know you want to be a farmer let's do it you know and that's fine you know I'm not, I'm not one of those parents or directors that's like all of the children in the organization need to be doctors, lawyers or pilots. Well, you know, not everybody wants to be a doctor and that's okay. You want to be a dancer, do it and do it to the absolute um, max of your ability. Try your best, do your best and you'll be the best dancer that the world's ever seen. But if you told you need to be a doctor and you're a dancer, you're going to be the worst doctor this country's <laughs> ever seen. Um, you know, and that's, you know, let let dreams be dreamt and then be achieved. That's, that's my biggest achievement.